and welcome back everybody so now that we have our pyfiglet library successfully installed we can now move on to one discussing how we're going to achieve building our basic port scanner and then move on to actually building and constructing our basic port scanner and then adding functionality on top of that and to boot a very useful and cool looking banner to greet us with once we execute our program. Now I do want to take just a moment here to tell you and to let you know how we're going to achieve uh, building this port scanner. What's going to be, what's the main engine behind it, right? So uh, what I want to do is I want to give you a short example of how we're going to achieve this. And to do that, uh, I am going to construct a very simple text file and show you how uh, sockets work because we're going to be using the socket library that comes pre-installed within uh, Python, uh, within Python 3, which is what we're going to be using. So I already have a simple text file here. As you can see, I've named it testsocket.py and I'm using mousepad. Now some iterations of Kali, I do understand they use leafpad. Uh, feel free to use nano or vim whatever uh, you feel comfortable with. Uh, I just happen to be using mousepad for this. Now, what I want to do is show you just how simple it is to really execute a, uh, uh, to, to really interact with, with the sockets here. So what we're going to do, uh, and I'm going to do this uh, as slowly as I can. And then if you need to pause the video, please uh, feel free to pause the videos. Um, and then so you can catch up but no worries because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make all of these, uh, you know, simple little uh, programs. I'm going to make everything available to you so you don't have to worry about copying it down. Uh, but if you want to work along with me, that is totally uh, acceptable as well. So what we're going to do is right here, we're going to step through this. We're going to import socket. We're going to import the socket uh, library into our file here, into our uh, program that we're, we're building here, like our little small uh, program script, whatever you really want to refer to it as. Um, you know, no worries there. So we're going to call that, and then we're going to declare a variable. So because I want to get the host name of the where I'm executing Python from, I am just going to call... Uh, this variable host name and then the host name is going to be equal to socket dot get host name and uh, there's a typo there so let me warn you ahead of time I actually make uh, a lot of typos from time to time uh, just kind of depends on the weather now what we've done here is we've declared a variable and then the information that this returns is going to be returned into this variable. Okay. And then now what we're going to do is we want to print that out to the terminal. Uh, and then I could just do something like print host name and we would be totally fine with that. However, I do like a little greeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put hello plus the variable just like that okay and within three lines of code that should be it so what I'm going to do is we're going to save that and since I already have an active terminal here let me get rid of this because I do realize the transparency is a little can be a little distracting make this a little wider for us okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to simply execute this by doing Python 3 and you can see we've been doing some testing already and we're going to do test socket dot py so the expected output that we expect is going to be hello hostname right so our hostname for this one should be Kali so if we execute it boom we get hello Kali so again it is just as simple as that you know, I bet you're wondering, how did I know how to do that? Well, even if I didn't know already how to use sockets, I really don't have to know, right? Uh, because we have a wonderful resource called the Internet, and we have these wonderful things called Python Docs. And uh, you can find really any function or any library uh, 
tons of information, how to use it, what it is, uh, even some of the history behind it on Python docs and on uh, python.org. So luckily for us, let me go ahead and minimize that. I already have that pulled up. So bam, right here. Okay, so I don't really know how to use, I don't really, I don't need to know how to use this. Uh, all I need to do is know how to go and get the information. Uh, so let me just, you know, take a moment here to speak with you about programming. Uh, so number one, programming is more, um, it's a lot of research, right? We know what a, we want a program to do. Uh, there's just a, usually a lot of research on how we achieve this because we don't know everything. Uh, there are tons of functions and libraries and shortcuts and all of these things wrapped into Python. It's such a wonderful language that it's just sheer impossible to know it all. Uh, I would say some of the the more used the you know print functions, uh, how to declare functions, things like that. You know, obviously we're not going to forget those. Uh, you know, the input command, which will be uh, the input statement, which we'll be dealing with later. But something like sockets, if you didn't know anything about it, you could just come and find the information right here. And so if I'm not familiar with sockets, I could just come here and right here, it has the source code, which is uh, lib for slash socket.py, which that is super helpful. Uh, and basically it tells us, it gives us access to the socket interface. It's a communication interface, uh, low level networking interface that tells us it is a communication interface. So if we scroll down through here, we see a ton of useful and helpful stuff here. Uh, we see examples, but what I am really interested in for our example is, and I promise it's here, is git hostname. There it is right there. So this probably looks very familiar to you. Simply put, it returns a string containing the host name of the machine where the Python interpreter is currently executing, right? So even if I didn't know anything about socket programming, I could still understand how to use sockets based on this example. And then what else is really helpful and useful is what I really enjoy from python.org uh, is it gives us a snippet. Now, when you see something like this, we can actually execute this from the, uh, from Python, from a Python shell, from, you know, the, from directly from the terminal. Uh, and this just tells us how we would go about doing that. It provides a really nice example. If we search further through here, we can find that there are some code snippets uh, that, we're, that we can use. Uh, so right here is one of them right here. See, again, uh, import socket. Uh, this is a function. And so this is, uh, you can you know use this and see how to use sockets and how to uh, construct them into your, to use them in your programming. So I just wanted to take that brief little moment there to tell you that we're going to be exploring sockets. We're going to be using the socket library uh, to build our basic port scanner. Now, next up, uh, we're actually going to open up PyCharm and we're going to start laying the groundwork for our, uh, for our port scanner. And it's going to be very basic. And then we're going to go in behind there and we're going to start adding some functionality to it, like a input function. And then we're going to add even more functionality to it and using our PyFiglet uh, library that was installed uh, earlier using pip. However, if you had any issues with that whatsoever, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, uh, Stark at StarkInternational.sc. I will be more than happy to help you any way that I can. So next up, uh, we will be into PyCharm, into our, uh, our IDE, and we will start building our basic port scanner. See you in the next video.